Hello, my name is Corey Saussier, and this is my presentation of my uh, dashboard project for my DSIM course at Jacksonville University for the second uh, summer session of 2014. Um, first and foremost, my goal with this project was to create a dashboard that was visually appealing, kind of drew the user across it, and allowed them to kind of go from one piece of data to the next to help them kind of see how each of them interconnect um, you know first starting with the performance of individual sales reps the time at which they perform greatest um, you know what kind of payments they're receiving and from what cha or through what channels uh, as well as I wanted to, to kind of look at what the trends were of the revenues by year um, and how that was actually altered by a change in the overall target for the year. Um, and finally, I, or not finally, but, but uh, next after that, I wanted to also show kind of a relationship between, you know, production costs and actual earnings from just the retail channel. Um, you know, that way they could kind of project that from, based on that, if, if we were to kind of spend a certain amount of money, what we could expect in retail earnings, um, you know, and what we'd be in the neighborhood of. Uh, finally, now that I, <laughs> I can get to that, um, we've got this chart in the bottom right, and this is seem, this seemed to be the the favorite of my user acceptance testing. Both both of my test subjects were very very uh, pleased by this, um, though they did state that I could have used. A, uh, a better legend for it. Now I'll, I'll go into more detail about that in a second. But first, I want to go with uh, you know the one kind of risk that I took, uh, risky choice that I made, which was this right here. It was the uh, these radial 24-hour clock devices. I thought this was going to be a great idea. It actually turned out to be kind of a little too confusing for both users, um, which was not really my intention. I, I just thought that this would be more. Um, kind of a visual representation that, that might be easier to accept thinking about time in the in terms of a clock but um, I guess you know to some extent maybe if I had made it a little bit larger or th there, there were several different design uh, flaws that maybe maybe made this more confusing um, than it needed to be um, as you can see uh, my goal was you know so that we could we could actually break this down based upon you know our individual sales channels too so you can see that like for this in this circumstance the retail uh, our primary times uh, for our peak sales hours were between 1 and 2 a.m. Um, 2 a.m. probably being the, the peak sales hour in general um, whereas you look at the uh, the direct sales it was this very small figure. Now I, I probably should have, um, and, and I, I, in retrospect, I kind of see an opportunity that I, I could have integrated a macro that would have caused the the actual target space to um, zoom in on that, uh, so that those figures might have a little more context, a little more meaning, since it's such a small little blotch of yellow, um, and. Finally, we see the online sales, and that was the, probably the, the the highlight there that you, everyone saw, which you know shows this between you know 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. is really where the the top sales are, and between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Um, probably the most prevalent figure there. Now, um, this this risk was something that, you know I I I took. And I, I really wasn't sure if it was going to to come across, but it, it seemed to really do well with with both of uh, both my users. They felt that this really illustrated um, how just how you know the sales goal by altering that sales goal, um, you know, for each individual would actually affect the um, you know what the average uh, target reached would be um, and uh, so what I did is I, I used a goal seek analysis to to manipulate just the target and goal percentages um, you know based on you know okay well for this normal purposes 
the goal percentage is any of these figures. And you can see that there's certain outliers. These people with the 251% under Kosteski, um, it, it just seemed like, you know, this guy is really, he's out doing himself, and he, his average percentage of, of difference is 251%. Now, granted, that was because he, he went low in 2013, but, um, you know, this this kind of change does definitely, um, definitely, you know, lead to a person needing to make higher, higher goals in the future, but um, it, it just isn't attainable, though. Like, if you look at Foster, or if you look at Campbell, they, um, or even at Shao, they, these, these sales percentage, the goals to, to meet their expected trend, where they're expected to end up, uh, it's just, um, it's just too much. It's more than they'd be able to attain. It's more than they'd be able to achieve. So I, I looked at it and I was like, okay, well, what if we, we went based on the goal percentage average? And uh, and, I, and that's where I came up with, with this. I, I ran that goal seek. And what I actually, and now you notice, see, the um, the expected trends are all the same as they were before. But you can see that the the target percentage act, or the target percentage is all 75%. Everyone's got a fair target. They gotta you know, and based upon their own sales for 2013, they've got to do 75% better. And um, yes, while that is that is pretty high, that's pretty tough. It's uh, certainly more reasonable than having certain individuals trying to accomplish 251% increases. Um, and by doing that, it actually took the average that each of these representatives made up uh, by about seventy-four thousand uh, dollars, and and that seemed like that was a, um, a, a probably another benefit of of following this this path. Um, but these are the, the the basic things that I was working on, and and you know I, the two risks that I took, the one that really didn't pan out so well, people didn't really understand it, and then this one which uh, both of my users really, really adored, and uh, I, I hope you like it. If you've got any questions or if you've got any information or suggestions, please forward them to me uh, by email. I'll have it posted underneath the, the video. Thank you.